My name is Phil Matero, and I'm the founder and CEO of Youth Build Park. Yeah. Now, prior to my time at the Youth Build Charter School of California, I spent many years working at the Los Angeles Conservation Corps. I think what most people would call the work that I do, uh, maybe dropout recovery work, or job creation, or youth development work, but over the years, as I have listened to so many stories from young people who have been kicked around by the education system, I think I've become more of an activist and an advocate for social justice and education. You see, the stories I've heard over the years are heartbreaking. I mean, literally, young people in schools whose teachers are telling them that they're never going to amount to anything, that they're never going to become anything in this life. And then you've got counselors and school administrators who are working hard to push young people out of their schools because they think they're going to drag their test scores down. I mean, it, it's, it's outrageous. It's criminal. I can't believe what's happening. So my life work now is really about trying to find a way so that every young person can succeed and feel that they really achieve the things that they want to in high school. I love my job. I love the work that I do. But all along, I really just wish that the system itself would do a better job of giving every opportunity to young people to succeed. And that's just not happening. There's so much wrong with the project. But today, I'm not going to talk about everything that's wrong. I'm going to talk about just one thing. Just one thing that I think is critical that we need to change in our school system. And I'm talking about grades. I'm talking about the way that we test and grade and rank students on a scale based on how they do on traditional academic assessment tests, standardized testing. That's what we do with young people. Um, and I know we think we have to have grades in school. We think that's just how it works, right? But it doesn't work. What it does is it creates a place in school where young people are sorted into categories of winners and losers. Those who grade on the exams feel like winners. Those who don't feel like losers. So I just want to take a look at this. Let's talk about how this works. So we have young people in school, six hours a day, 180 days a year, 12 years. I mean, what's the goal of all this? I think at the end of this, we're hoping that young people complete this education process and feel equipped to go out into the world and take on whatever challenges they want to take on college, or whatever their dreams are. And so how do we make sure that they're ready to take on those challenges? I mean, do we make sure that the knowledge and skills that they gain in high school are that they're ready to use those to build better communities? Do we put them in work settings and make sure that their skills are, are applicable and, and ready to be transformed into a work environment? Yeah. We give them a standardized test, multiple choice. And and we give these tests to them, and they're not even intended to determine what they're good at. No, they're just, the, the purpose for the test is to see how much the student can remember of what the teacher thinks is important. Not to see how good the students are, where their abilities are. It's all about the teacher. And then we rank these students, and we put them on a scale, and everybody's got a number somewhere from here to here, and, and, and that's what we think we're supposed to do. Now, when I was a teacher, I was an English teacher, I actually thought my job was to make sure every student understood the material. I thought I was supposed to make sure every student achieved these learning objectives that we have for our students. Well, I don't know. I guess that's not the way it works, because if you were a teacher and you achieved that goal and you had everybody win in class and you gave everybody an A, you'd get called into the administrative office and they would tell you, You've got to distribute these grades evenly. Everybody can't be a winner in this system. You can't give everybody A. You know, this system requires that there be some losers. So I don't know why we do this. It, it doesn't make any sense. Um, the only thing that I know of why we do this is because it's a simple way to determine the value of our system. So every student gets a number. Those numbers roll up to the district. They roll up to the state. And now we know who are the good students, who are the good teachers, which are the good schools, and from 
that, they determine who gets bonuses, who gets to be fired, what schools are good. We use all those numbers in that way. But these numbers, we know they're not real. We know they don't really mean anything. They don't mean what they think they mean. I mean, we all know students who could explain to you how photosynthesis works, for example. But when you get on a test and they give you these, these really intentionally tricky options, like four different multiple choice steps, that student could get that answer wrong, even though they understand photosynthesis really well. And then it's only testing what's on the test, right? I mean, you could have been a student and you could have really enjoyed the, the section on stamens and pistols, and you could have really made some great connections about how plant biology connects with human biology, and you could have had some really good experience in that reading, but if that's not on the test, you don't have the chance to talk about your authentic discoveries and education. They're going to tell you, hey, just answer the question on the test. We don't care about that other stuff, right? And, and really, the only thing that's making uh, that the way to succeed in these tests is good memorization skills and try to figure out what the teacher wants you to learn. You have to figure out what, what they want you to put on the test. So it doesn't account for the differences in our students. It doesn't account for the fact that some students might be really good in math or science and just not so good in English. It doesn't account for that kind of ingenuity that young people have and that, that we have when we're excited about a subject and really want to go, go all out in that area. That's where we get some of the best innovations and some of the best creations that we make. But this kind of system just wants everybody to be good at everything or you're a loser. And by the way, you know, this arbitrary bar that we set as the standard, I mean, that even holds back the students who are really good at that. Because, I mean, if you get to the top, you get to the bar, you reach that goal, you're just going to stop, right? There's no need to go further than that. I'm there. I'm done. All right. So it's not even working for anybody, this testing system that we have. Um, and then, of course, some students just don't connect to the whole testing thing anyway. I mean, some students just are, 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 are great, talented, creative people, but they just don't ever do well on the test. Um, my sister and I went to the same school growing up. Uh, we had the same teachers. We took the same tests. And uh, for whatever reason, tests were pretty easy for me. I could always figure out what was going to be on the test and spit it back and do okay. My sister, though, she struggled. She always got C's and D's on the test. And, of course, my parents were upset and, you know, you've got to do something here. And so they gave her extra hours of homework that she had to do every night. They threatened her with all kinds of punishments. She didn't pick up her grades. And really, none of that actually did anything for her. It didn't, it didn't change anything. She still was getting C's and D's on the test. It's just the way it was. And I don't think that was ever going to change. So she just grew really more and more frustrated with the, the pressure on her to do better at school, and she just didn't feel like she could. So she ended up quitting. I mean, she quit trying. Uh, and I'd say to her, to her credit, she started to rebel against the system and my parents and try to gain a little self-respect back by saying, I don't care about all that stuff, it doesn't matter. But deep down, I know that this was something that affected her life. I mean, I think the fix was in on her. I mean, she really walked away from high school feeling that she was a loser, that she was less than, and didn't have the skills to compete. I mean, this is crazy, right? I mean, this game that we're playing in school with the testing is rigged. I mean, we try to tell, we tell students that it's a level playing field, that everybody can win. You just work hard enough and you'll win. You'll get to great. But it's just not true. I mean, the people who win in this system, the students who win, are the ones who have a tradition of academic uh, success in their family. They're good at memorizing. They have quiet places to study and resources to do that. Those are the ones who do well in this test. For the rest, the odds are against them. I mean, it's tough to win in this game. Um, maybe just do a quick informal study or survey here. Um, how many people have ever been made to feel humiliated in school because you couldn't figure out something that was going on? How many people were told by your teacher, that teacher, that maybe you were a bad student or something? <laughs> look around. Just look around. I mean, look at all these hands. This is for many hands. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is an after I don't know what we're trying to do here with this testing thing. We're really trying to humiliate our young people. 
you know, we want them to walk out of high school feeling confident, feeling like they can take on anything. Don't we want to figure out what they're good at and help them develop those skills? I don't understand what we're doing here. So we can do better. I mean, we could we could create a school where young people are are valued, where their ideas about education are appreciated. Of course, you. You learn your math and science and social studies and all that. But we can do that in a way that is more applied, that it makes sense. I mean, if you want to be a, a you know, web designer or a sound engineer or an entrepreneur, we can have classes that, that make sense to you, that, that actually are, are applied in the field that you care about. It could be a way that you could develop your passions and kind of really get focused on your future, what you want to do. We can do that. But, you know, anytime I've asked school administrators and said, hey, can we use something other than just test scores to, to you know, evaluate the, the, the progress of our students, uh, they'll always answer me in this very pompous uh, way, you know, kind of self-congratulatory way where they'll say, oh, well, no, at this school district, we believe that all students can achieve the highest level. We could never <laughs> take the easy way out and let any student graduate if they didn't meet our high standards, right? They're doing the easy way out, right? What could be easier? One test for all students, right? That's easy. What I'm talking about is asking schools and educators to do the hard work of education, to educate each student, each one, as a human being, as an individual, get to know that young person, figure out what they're good at, and help them develop those skills. And um, I, I, this reminds me of uh, John Wooden. I, do you know John Wooden, the, the UCLA basketball coach? Who, uh, he was very successful. He had 88 wins in a row, one of the best college basketball coaches ever. Right? And we must think he lost. He must have had a really great system of how he worked with his, his uh, player in basketball. Well, John Wooden actually started out as a teacher. And he did a TED Talk. And he talked about how hard it was for him as a teacher to give grades to students because he felt like it was so unfair that you would be ranking these students and say, well, you're an A, you're a B, you're a C, you're a D. I mean, he just couldn't do it. He said, no, that's, that's crazy. Everyone has their own individual capacity and strength. I would never do that to a student. So he turned to coaching. And there he found a way, he found that through coaching, you could value each individual. And the way to success and to get the most out of each individual was to understand that they're not all the same, right? Every young person, every player on the team needed to figure out what they're good at, develop those skills, and figure out how to contribute to the team. And he, he considered a success when everybody was doing their best and working their hardest and really committed to excellence. Okay. I mean, we could value students in that way and do that. At Youthville Charter School of California, one of the things we like to do is to have teachers and students work together and do a social investigation of their community and decide on a social justice issue that they want to take on. Teachers and students working together and figuring this out. Um, you know, one of the examples, an example of this is that some of our students have been working on the issue of sheriff brutality in the LA County Jail. So they did their research, put a plan together, connected with other community groups who are working on this issue, uh, held town hall meetings, brought testimony to the County Board of Supervisors, and have even hosted a attendance <coughs> forum for, to replace the outgoing sheriff. I mean, their hope is actually to be able to work on a citizen oversight panel at some point in the future. I mean, that's exciting. That's, that's great stuff. Young people really taking charge and, and owning their education. And the teachers, who work with the students on these projects, make sure that everything they do connects to the state standards, they're getting their objectives for learning that they need to do, but each student's learning analytical skills in their own unique way, and, in their, and that, that really values their unique contribution to the team. And we're not alone in this. There are other schools that are doing, that are also resisting standardized testing and doing a school in a way that, that really respects um, respects young people and, and their individual abilities. We're part of the Coalition of Essential Schools. It was founded by Ted Sizer, 
and many of the values of that organization are about things like you know respecting creativity, respecting student creativity. We have a curriculum that values depth and analysis rather than just skipping over a lot of topics and making sure that students own the work and own their education. And teachers should function more as coaches than as taskmasters. Um, and then, you know, there are also education theorists who are on this also and are calling out for us to do something different in our schools. Alfie Cohn wrote an essay called The Case Against Grade. And a lot of the stuff I'm talking about here he's developed in that essay. But I mean, really, there's a lot of ways that we could pull this together. And there's a lot of movement, a lot of effort to, to move away from standardized testing. We could do this. I mean, the goal is to have healthy, competent, confident adults. And that that should be our goal in high school. We can do better than what we're doing right now. We need to stop reinforcing negativity and competition in our schools and really start valuing each student. My sister is a bad student. Um, you know, she really needed some positive reinforcement at school. And she didn't get any help. I mean, it was tough on her. She needed some love from the system. But, um, but unfortunately, um, you know, over the years, this growing lack of confidence uh, kind of took her down a bad path and spiraled into some disillusionment and despair that only ended when she took her own life. And now I'm not saying the school system is at fault or complicit in the death of my sister. I mean, there were a lot of factors involved in that. But I think that if school had been a place where she could have found some acceptance, some trust and value from people and could have been appreciated for who she was, I think it would have helped a lot towards her and maybe having a shot at success. My God, I mean, she was an amazing artist, uh, an accomplished musician, a dedicated athlete, a loyal friend. I mean, what a waste of earning potential. So anyway, I think we need to rethink what we're doing in schools around this issue of grading. Let's make sure that no, no student ever leaves high school feeling like they're 